Hey everybody, welcome to The Bottom Line. I'm Michael Nolan. That's right, he's hot, he's sexy, he's dead, and he's about ready to go on tour. All right, so everybody has to come to grips with their own mortality at some time in their life, don't they? But it seems like today, as an audience, as a collective audience, we are in a state of denial. First, we get Paul McCartney duetting with a videotaped John Lennon. That's bad enough, and he wasn't the first to do this. And then we get ABBA touring as avatars, and of course, KISS previewed their avatars on their very last show, at Madison Square Garden. Of course, KISS won't have their show ready until 2027, but we won't have to wait until 2027. In fact, this very year in London, followed in Berlin, and then Tokyo, and of course, Las Vegas, Elvis goes on tour. And who is bringing us this miracle? Well, they call themselves Relayered, reality. And it is Andrew McGinnis, the CEO of Relayered Reality, that is bringing us this so-called miracle. Uh, take a look at him. He's my new number one bad guy in rock and roll. Talk about a man who needs a resurrection. Now, Andrew has explained they're going to be taking videos and using those as the source for this new life-size avatar of Elvis. And I want you guys to remember that because we're gonna talk about that. They're going to present Elvis in various different incarnations of his career. We're gonna get a young Elvis, we're going to get a mid Elvis, and we're gonna get a late Elvis. How late, I don't know. Something tells me we're not gonna get the fat Elvis version at this show. Now, remember, I said that this is going to be a life-sized Elvis. Now, think about that. That either means these shows are gonna be very small shows so that everybody can see him, then the tickets will be extremely high to see these shows, right? Or they're gonna have larger shows and they'll put up the usual jumbotrons, won't they? Now think about what that means. That means you would go see a dead guy's avatar being projected onto a TV screen and pay for the privilege. I mean, talk about a collective denial in the audience these days. We can't just let these guys pass on as nature intended. Now, I know a lot of you Elvis fans out there are gonna say, but I never got to see Elvis tour. Well, let me let you in on a little secret, folks. You're not going to be seeing him on this tour either. The man is dead. But I guarantee you one thing right now, these shows will sell out. They will make money. And yet we all are complaining uh, that there's no new rock and roll left anymore. Oh, and by the way, Andrew is working with hip hop and rap artists as well. You know, come to think of it, uh, Disney's gonna lose Mickey Mouse here. Maybe they could do a Mickey Mouse. He could play lead banjo for Elvis as he uh, does his more uh, rockabilly numbers. Hell, at this point, I'm sure they're working on Ed Sullivan's avatar as we speak. He'll be introducing both Elvis and the Beatles. But why do I have such a big problem with this? Some people say, look, it's like a ride, Michael. Settle down. We're just going to enjoy almost like a movie. But see, that's my point. Andrew and his gang are calling this a live event. In fact, they claim it's the future of live events. I kind of thought live events required a live audience and a live performer. You know, I've given Bob Dylan a hard time for selling his catalog. I even gave uh, Bruce Springsteen a hard time for selling his catalog for a half a billion dollars. I always thought it would be better to pass that stuff on to one's family. But at this point, because you know it is Elvis's family, his inheritors that have okayed this, what the hell do I care whether Bruce Springsteen's great-granddaughter's son 
has a portion of his music? And why should Andrew and his company, along with those in Elvis's will, profit over our own longing? And then for it to wind up in Vegas, how precious is that? We now have Elvis forever in Vegas. First, we get residencies because artists are too old to tour. Then we get a big globe in the middle of the desert where everybody piles into it. Have you seen the videos of those concerts? Everybody's looking up at the wall. Of course, the performers look about this big on stage, so they have no choice. But none of them there are paying attention to the actual live talent. We get further and further and further away from reality the farther we go with this ridiculous line of entertainment. Now, take Disneyland for an example. Now, Disneyland is a wonderful place to visit, especially for children. And later, when you have children yourself, it's a wonderful place to live vicariously through your children. But you always know it's a pit stop in your life. This is almost something completely different to me. All right, folks, I'm going to have a poll on this on my community page. You guys be sure to check that out and vote on it. I don't know how I'm going to phrase the question, but I've got to get some response from you guys. I want to know, are you even entertaining to go see this non-entertainer event? If so, why? What are your reasonings? Am I just an old musician who sees a lot of current talent being put off into the wings because we can't let go of our past icons? All right, I hope you enjoyed the video tonight. It's been a while since I've been on a rant. I do want to say thanks to uh, Matthew Street. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate you sending some folks over to my channel to vote on Terry Draper's uh, title track off of his album in the beginning. Matthew Street is a big Klaatu fan. I know Larry Graves is too. And Terry's album is fantastic. I love it. It is a whimsical album. If you're looking for heavy metal or anything like that, you're not gonna be happy with it. But if you are willing to, you know, Rachel said that in our interview. If you're willing to let yourself go for the whimsy, for the whimsy ride, you're gonna love that album. All right, that about does it for me. I'm Michael Nolan, this is The Bottom Line, and together, folks, you and I, in the comments, we are the tribe. <laughs>